Hey everybody, I'm here to show y'all how to make gumbo the way we do at Brenda's. I just want to say a little bit about gumbo. It's like the classic South Louisiana soup, stew, whatever you want to call it. Everybody has a big opinion about gumbo. Everybody makes gumbo. There's a lot of different types of gumbo that you can make. One that I'm going to show you today is the gumbo that we make here at Brenda's. It's been on the menu since day one and it's a pretty, I would say kind of standard gumbo. What you're going to need is canola oil, onion, bell pepper, celery, garlic, okra, and dewy sausage or any other type of smoked pork sausage, diced, boneless, skinless, chicken, chicken base, dried thyme, bay leaf, salt, pepper, cayenne pepper, scallions for garnish. The first thing we're gonna do is dice one onion. Okay, in case you didn't know how to dice an onion, this is how you do it. You got the claw method. We're gonna do one incision crossways that way, and then we go down this way. Then we're gonna dice three bell peppers. Time to dice some celery. I'm gonna slice the fresh okra that I have now, which is beautiful, but not always easy to find. It is totally okay to use frozen okra if you can't find fresh. I would not recommend using canned though because I think it would just be too weird and slimy. So let's get this cut. I like okra. If you don't like okra, don't put it in the gumbo. I'll be slicing the scallion for garnish. <laughs> Which is optional. You don't have to put it on there if you don't want to. But I highly recommend it. Be a nice, bright, poppy, oniony finish at the end of your deep, rich, stewy bowl of goodness. There are three parts to making a good gumbo. The first part is your roux. Second part is making the gumbo itself, which is thickened by the roux. And then the third part is your rice that you want to eat your gumbo with. And why not? I'll show you how to make rice too. What a roux is basically, is whatever type of fat of your choice that you might want to use to like flavor your gumbo. It could be like a neutral tasting oil, like a vegetable oil. It could be butter. At our restaurant we use lard, bacon drippings that we can scrounge together because pork fat rules, and um, equal parts flour. First thing you're going to do is you're going to get your pan nice and hot. This is about a little bit over a cup of each. You're going to add your lard or whatever fat you're using. Maybe just before it starts to like smoke, you don't want to get it smoking hot, you add your equal parts flour, and that's just plain all-purpose flour. And to start, just to get it nice and evenly mixed together, I'm gonna to use a whisk. Ooh. I'm not afraid of the roux, I'm not afraid of the heat. I wanna to get to the color I want faster, so I'm using a higher flame. If that scares you, turn it down. The main thing you want to remember is don't be a total coward and stop your roux before it's dark enough. Now when I get to this point, I don't know, I have issues with metal against metal. I prefer a wooden utensil and I like this nice flat uh, wooden spoon spatula thing because it, uh, it scrapes the bottom really well and you want to get all those brown bits up. You don't want them to burn because that would suck and it wouldn't taste good. We're about 20 minutes in. Um, the roux is a light brown color. I'd say we have about another 20, 25 minutes to get to the color that we want. My flame is medium low and I'm just, I'm just, I'm here. I'm just, I'm gonna take care of this for right now. You don't have to stir constantly, but you should not neglect. Here we are at the 45 minute mark. We've been over like a medium low flame. I have adjusted the flame every once in a while so it doesn't get out of control. I'm happy with the color. It smells great. 
Uh, I purposely made more than I normally would use because I love the satisfaction of knowing that I have a really good roux somewhere at my disposal at any given moment. Since opening the restaurant, I've found a, a better way to actually control the flavor, the seasoning, and how thick I want my gumbo by actually adding the roux in later, which is what we're gonna do now. So next part, let's make gumbo. Okay, we have everything ready. So we're gonna get our pot going. So again, we're not starting with the roux, which is more of a traditional way of making gumbo. We're actually gonna add the roux later so that we can adjust the consistency of the gumbo. Some people like their gumbo thin. I like mine to feel like rich. Put about mm, three tablespoons of canola oil in the pot. I'm actually gonna put my andouille sausage in first. The reason why I'm doing that is I wanna sear the sausage, render a little bit of that fat out just to get some flavor going. And to this, in the very beginning, I'm gonna add about a good tablespoon of dried thyme. And I add that in the beginning, because the herb is dried, I want it to meet that hot oil and have that bloom out. Same thing with two bay leaves. I'll throw that in. So now that's a little bit rendered and caramelized, I'm gonna throw in two heaping tablespoons of minced garlic. Once the garlic starts to brown a little bit, I'm going to add one diced onion. Same thing, let that go a little bit. The sausage that I'm using right now is not our usual andouille that we use at the restaurant. I actually wanted to relate the home cook and I just went with what I found at the grocery store, which was linguica, which has a little more paprika in it, which is where we're getting that red color from. Next up, our diced celery. I'm putting the chicken in now. Cook, cook, cook. The chicken, she is about halfway done. We're gonna go ahead and add our bell pepper and our okra. If I was using frozen okra, I would add the okra a little later. I'm gonna get a little saute on all of this. And my flame's pretty high right now because I do want to get some color on everything. When I first opened, we had a, all of 900 square feet. There was no housing of large cases of chicken bones and giant pots of stock. Out of necessity, all of our recipes here were built around this stuff, which is basically pre-made chicken base. You can get it at pretty much any grocery store. Not only is it compact, but it just it adds an extra layer of umami and saves us a ton of time and space. Okay, well, I'm stirring. Chicken's mostly cooked. Veggies are mostly cooked, but the, the bell pepper and the okra is still pretty intact. And now I'm gonna add my chicken broth. Hello. I'm gonna bring this up to a boil, and then I'm gonna thicken, and then I'm gonna season. So now that our gumbo is boiling, I have it like at a nice simmer. I'm ready to take my pre-made dark and delicious looking roux and I'm going to start thickening it. And I'm going to thicken to the consistency that, that I like it. And you should do the same. If you don't want it thick, don't put much. If you want it thick, you, you're probably going to end up putting more in than you think you are. And what this is going to do is it's going to not just thicken it, it's gonna give it that deep, nutty, rich flavor. Uh, remember, it was made with lard. There's nothing wrong with that. I've added a decent amount of roux. It's a nice kind of like gravy consistency, which I think is freaking sexy as hell. And then the last thing that we need to do is we're gonna season with uh, salt, pepper, and cayenne. And very important, taste as you go. Black pepper, it actually didn't need that much salt. <clears throat> I like spicy. Okay, 
I am very happy. Um, the only thing that would make this better is if you had the patience to eat this tomorrow because it's just going to get better. I'm going to show you all how to cook rice. If you have a rice cooker, even easier. Do some parboiled rice, idiot proof. Read the directions. I'm going to make this plain long grain rice, which calls for a one to two ratio. And what that means is one cup of rice to two cups of water. Before I do that, I'm gonna rinse it. Enough to get some possible extra debris that was left on the rice off and to also get some of that extra gluten off. I like a little bit of a sticky rice, but not super sticky, especially not for uh, this kind of cooking. What I'm doing here is I just added some water, stir, stir, stir with my hands. I'm gonna pour it out until the water's clear. As you can see right now, the water's pretty cloudy. And there's a little bit of debris, not a ton. I'll do that once. I think two times is enough. And I'm not using a strainer. If you just pour it out slowly, all the rice settles to the bottom of the bowl so that you're getting most of that cloudy water out. And then I'm gonna take this rice and I'm gonna put it right into my pot. Come here, little rice pot. So this is one cup pre-rinsed rice and I'm gonna use two cups water. Some restaurants like to get a little fancy and they'll serve their gumbo with brown rice or basmati rice or whatever type rice. And by all means, you know, if you have a favorite rice, use your favorite rice, but I'm kind of more of a purist when it comes to this style of food. And so I go with the plain rice. I got my one cup rice pre-rinsed, two cups water, my little rice pot. What I'm gonna do next is I'm setting that on the stove. I'm gonna bring that up to a simmer. I'm gonna low it down and I'm gonna cover it and I'm gonna let it steam for 20 minutes. And that's pretty much it. Okay, it's been 20 minutes over a low simmer. My rice is done and you know, a little sticky like I like it, but cook through. I don't season my rice. I don't need butter, I don't need salt, I don't need any of that stuff because all the flavor is in the stew and you really want that rice to be there as, as, as a foil to soak in all those great flavors. So there you go, that's rice. So, we're ready to try the gumbo. It's got a little bit of body to it. The vegetables are still present. They haven't disappeared on me. I got some rice. I have to wipe the bowl because I'm a chef and I can't control myself. I got scallions. You don't have to do scallions. Um, I'm gonna try this, y'all. You can smell the roux. It was worth it. It was worth wait, waiting all that time for that roux. Mm. Smoky, velvety, rich, spicy, the way I like it. I love a cayenne heat. Catches up with you later, but it's worth it. Delicious. I'm happy. She is so beautiful. Do you see this? Look at that, Max. Look at it.